Uh, I'm Bill Mather, and I'm a matte painter, also a concept artist. Sort of goes hand in hand. Um, it's nice to do, be able to do concept artwork, meaning um, when you when you get a, an initial project coming in, sometimes the director needs to know what is it going to look like, you know, when I do the final matte painting. So if one, the same person is doing the, the concept for the shot, I'm showing it off, they say, yeah, we like that, or change this or that, and then, and then it's more direct line to then do the final matte painting. Um, and I've been in this business for a pretty long time, even before the first Photoshop, I was actually painting real on um, glass uh, with real paints, and uh, it was pre-digital. So that was 1988. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of things have changed in that time. Um, yeah, I'll sit down now. Um, because uh, when I started out, it's called in-camera compositing. And that's, they are, they're called matte paintings because we would actually set a real mat in front of the, the, the camera that was shooting the live action. So as an example, it was my very first matte painting, um, it was like a, 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 a fail-safe kind of movie where people were scrambling to their, their planes, the bombers, that I think the Russians dropped some bombs on, the, on our capital, and so the, there was a shot where <clears throat> the pilots were scrambling to their B-52 bombers. Did you want to say something about where the exits are? Sven? Um, yeah, the, there's a bathroom across the way for men and women at the front. The exit's out toward the street that way. Be safe. Yeah. Thank it covers you. the safety thing. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and stay in school. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, so then they, when they shot, they're just out in the parking lot. And there were the people are dressed up as pilots and everything, and they're, they're like, the running out into the parking lot, um, but what they wanted it to look like that they're running to their airplanes, and so the part where you don't want to expose the this is being shot on film too, um, so the part you don't want to expose or they want to paint out, you have to put tape in front of the camera lens so that doesn't get any exposure on the, on the film. So now that they shoot this, okay, action, they all run run on the in the parking lot, and um, the black tape holds out the, uh, the un unexposes the film. So then you rewind the film back, <coughs> and now, uh, so if they want the airplanes in there, now with the, what the, the, the film that's been exposed is the live action. And uh, the unexposed part is where I, and I did a painting of B-52 bombers. I painted them in perspective. Um, actually, we just made a little model of a B-52 bomber, and I, t I photographed it in the proper perspective, and I used that as my reference to paint, because it's a big four feet by five foot piece of glass, mm -hmm. and it's all painted black. So then where the, the live action is, it's all black in my painting. The painting looks a little funky then, because it's like, it's just a big black spot underneath, but then has these, the, the airplanes are all painted in the top. <clears throat> and what that does is that you have a matte camera that's on a locked off stand and then the camera sees my painting where it will it'll expose the film where the unexposed film is uh, when they shot the initial photography. So um, now the, the film is seeing, exposing where it was unexposed but it still has the live action is exposed. You want to make sure that doesn't get any kind of exposure in there because it'll double expose, it'll make like a little white line. So my, the painting has to be super precise. Um, I'm, this is just like I'm talking about the old school stuff, the old school way of doing it. Because um, that was a very physical technique and, and, and situation. Um, also, the, the day that you're, you're compositing it, you're running select film through the camera and you're, you're vi you know, pick, taking pictures of your of my matte painting, but if a moth or something flies through, or like what the <laughs> mat the mat stands have a, a, a lighting that has to light my painting to, to precise uh, exposure to match what the 
the, the um, on-set kind of photography was. So if a light bulb goes out, then you're screwed. You've got when you replace it, it's going to have a little different t color and and uh, exposure and everything. It was a very physical endeavor. Um, yeah, like I said, it, it, if there, we, we did a lot of we sprayed, you know, insect spray here because if uh, anything flies through, it would look like this gigantic moth coming through the shot. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then the thing is, you only have like maybe two. They'll do two or three takes. They'll have one select, so you have a select take to work with, and then you have a you know a, a, a B side that if anything goes wrong with A, you could use the B. But anyway, um, so uh, that was my first map painting. It was called By Dawn's Early Light. I also did a, um, a shot where the president's looking out the helicopter window. And that, that's one of the things that a map, painter's use, map paintings use for is like um, destruction. Like you can show the, the, the Capitol building all burned up and broken down. The, you know, it's like, it, it's not real, but you know, you, they want to show that the bomb hit the Capitol building and the Washington Tower, or the Washington uh, Monument fell over, it was all busted up. So that was all in the painting. That was a point of view painting, so um, I just did one painting that just they, they photographed uh, with a map camera. Um, but uh, I say I'm an award winning artist, and but the, so they submitted the reel for that by Don's Real Light. They got we got nominated for the Emmy Awards, and then we actually won. And <laughs> thankfully, I was working for a really small company at the time, it was called Matt World. And they actually changed it to Matt World Digital later because when Photoshop started coming in. Um, so it was a small company, and so I was able to go up on stage and grab a, a, a statue. So, and it was my very first matte painting. And uh, so I was off and running real quick. <laughs> and, and then I worked on Dra Bram Stoker's Dracula, and that was all traditional. We were using miniatures and. Um, and once again, painting on glass, and uh, yeah, that was those were interesting times. Like I say, a very physical way of doing the matte paintings. And I'm glad I started there because then I went to Industrial Light and Magic, and that's George Lucas's place, and that's what that's where I was uh, did this shot, um, and it was so. That, I think George was one of the first people to use digital for his, it was Young Indiana Jones. Uh, the, there was a TV show, Young Indiana Jones, and then we were starting to do, the map paintings for that were digital. And I actually got another uh, nomination for Young Indiana Jones, <clears throat> it's called The Hawkman. And um, so we were nominated for that and I was able to go to the, the fest, the, you know, the event. But we didn't get it. We were up against uh, Gulliver's Travels, and they had millions of dollars budget, and George had maybe a few thousand dollars or something for uh, Young Indiana Jones. Uh, so it wasn't, it was apples and oranges there. The one good thing, or the fun thing, would have been uh, Jerry Mathers was one of the presenters when, when you go up to get the statue, and my last name is Mather. And so I had a little thing going, was like, if I was going up there to get the statue, and, you know, you have a little speech and everything, I was going to turn to Jerry and say, yeah, thanks a lot for, you know, everybody wants to add an S to my last name. It's probably because of you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, um, unless it's Bill Mathers and it's a comma, you know, saying that's something that I've done. Um, so, but, no, that was fun. And I, then I worked on... Forrest Gump, and um, they got a nomination. They they won the Oscar award, but then now I'm working for a really big company, and then you only go to the awards if you're one of the upper people. You know, you've got all kinds of supervisors, and the, the, um, there's hundreds of people that in in a show like Star Wars or Forrest Gump, and it, as you see the credits at the end of the movies. It just goes on and on, and there's just hundreds of people that are involved. So it's hard. I didn't. I didn't get the 
Well, I wanted to get an Oscar. I see I got a, 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 an Emmy. I figured, well, an Oscar would go really nice with that Emmy. And maybe they could give me a couple. <laughs> but um, uh, anyway, so they, but I got a little, there's a, a paper thing that says you, you got the, an Oscar for Forrest Gump. But let me get to, um, enough about me. <laughs> I'll talk about, uh, you know, what it's all about to, to be a map painter. So, um, when is a map painting used? Well, um, it's when uh, a lot of times they'll you know, pay for a situation of peril. So, you know, the actors don't want to be hanging off a, a big cliff or on a, you know, 100 foot or 100 story building. Um, you've seen it before, people out on the ledge and, and there's, there'll be a camera angle showing you know, if he slips off the ledge, it's it's a certain death. But that's not happening, so they use a matte painter or some special effect to show a situation of peril. I worked on um, on Fast and Furious Seven, and they had the cars just going in a, a dirt field, you know, making a turn. But they're out in a dirt field, and then they say, okay, then post production takes that, that's the plate, it's called the plate, um, and then we can now paint a, like a cliff, it looks like if they, if they didn't make that turn, then they, they'll, they'll, in special effects, we'll put rocks and things that ever, and dust that kicks up, I'm called in visual effects. So the visual effects, I did the painting, where it looks like a really big ravine and, and distant mountains and everything. Um, so it's used for, yeah, like situations of peril. Um, then there's, here's an example of, you know, it, we can paint other worlds, like when they shoot a movie, it's a science fiction movie. Um, you know, here's, here, I painted Curtisant in the background. I'll show the tab. So, well, first of all, Here's the, um, this is this is a storyboard. So um, they'll shoot principal photography, then it'll go through a storyboard stage, um, and uh, that's where the concept and storyboard, like George is looking at, like how the what's what's included in the shot, right? And so that's that's the storyboard, and that's what I, it's given to me. Like, okay, well, we like this layout. So then I will start to, um, you know, develop the, the look of, this is Coruscant, and it's a, it's a planet that's just all uh, developed and it's apartments and a lot of buildings. Um, so that's my base, and then they wanted, a, a, you know, a, a tower, and then that tower matches, you know, this, and, and some it, and some movies that they were they really follow the the storyboard. You've got to be very accurate and and, and uh, stay with the storyboard. Sometimes the storyboard is just more of a suggestion. And that's where <clears throat> me being a, a, a concept artist will will do a, first do a concept, show that first, and then they go okay, yeah, develop that into the map painting. But this was a storyboard that I had to really follow, and then. On another layer, uh, I keep the the plate. So, you know, this is just the, the live action that they shot, and then um, then I can put my uh, painting behind it. And then this is the little glow that's on the edge. So, you know, of course, Coruscant doesn't exist, and you know they can't just go and shoot something. Um, and so that's where a map painter comes in. Um, also, like a, for a time period, if they're shooting a time period movie and, and there's some signage that's it's too modern, um, and you know they can change the cars out, you know if, if they're trying to make it like a 30s period or 40s or whatever, um, they'll dress the sets and then of course the costuming and everything will should reflect the, the time period, but. Um, like there's certain things that New York may have, like from the 30s or 40s, 
you know, uh, signage, you know, like drug stores and, um, you know, just the way the street looks and, and the way buildings are configured. Uh, so to get the period piece, that they ha it has to be reconstructed um, with a matte painting. Uh, and more and more, it is going more digital. They'll give you, a, they'll, they'll build some buildings in, in CG, and they'll be computer generated models. And a lot of times I'll use that as my base. Uh, I think I might have an example of that. Um, well, yeah, here's, here's, this is for Mercedes-Benz, this is for Mercedes-Benz ad, and I think they want it to be more future, futuristic, so, um, that is the final painting, but this is what they shot. So I think the car, I think the car came zipping through from under the camera, it came down that, came down that pathway, and um, so are these these paintings project are done in, in digital format, and then they're projected on a wall, and then the actors get in front of them and do their acting. No, um, sometimes that's called that a uh, that's called a, um, a something light, something trans light. That's called a trans light. But when, you, when you say these are painting, are they are actual paintings or are they digital and they're projected? Well, I am saying paintings because, but they're digital. They're digital. No, they have a digital music Photoshop. Um, but it's still all, all painting rules apply to it. You know, and that's why I'm sort of glad that I, I did start with real painting and real on glass with paint because I have that traditional background. Um, so before you, before Photoshop, you'd actually paint this on glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, I would have to paint all these buildings. Wow. Um, and and then, yeah, it was really tedious. Um, so I'm really. Some of my map painting buddies did not embrace the uh, digital age. They're like, oh no, that's no good. That that's not real art. Um, you know, it's like. No, I'm an artist, I paint on glass, you know, I use paints, and they didn't really take to it, but uh, I remember Craig Barron, his dad was in tech, technology and, and had a lot of, it was right cutting edge of computers, and he brought in a Mac II or something like that, and um, it's just this, this kind of flesh-colored box, <laughs> it was the first Apple, it was the Macintosh, I guess, uh, 2CI or something. And as soon as I saw the cloning tool and, and that you can just have, you know, you can, you can clone, the cloning tool was the main thing because I had to match the textures with, with paint and a brush. I had to match whatever was shot in the live action. <clears throat> that was really tedious because, well, for the Dracula shots, uh, they shot something on set and they dressed the, the there were some fake rocks and things. So it has a certain texture to it, but you have to match that and then bring it up into your painting. So I'm looking at, like you're working with a loop and you're looking at what that texture looks like and you have to, you know, try to copy it. So when digital came in and Photoshop and um, I could use the clone tool, I could just clone out of the, the, the live action plate. Okay, yes, I bought a computer right away. <laughs> and uh, just, I, was, I actually didn't, had to sleep for a few days. Just it was just such so wonderful, and so I took right to it. And along those lines, um, okay. So yeah, this was a locked off plate. So then with digital, the camera can start to move a little bit too, because um, like I was saying when I was when it was, when it was in camera compositing, everything had to be locked off, soft, super solid. You couldn't have any dynamic camera moves or anything because, you know, like I said, the, the mat line had to be very precise and you just, you just can't have any movement. Uh, this, was a per, this was a locked off shot. Um, so uh, that was for Mercedes-Benz commercial. But, um, what was I going to say? You know, when I, when I heard that, you know, you could work digitally, that was back in the 80s, you know, 
1988, 87, I was thinking, oh, big, those big square blocks, you know, oh, digital. And I was thinking like, you know, the Pac-Man or something, kind of looking digital. But it was in millions of colors by then. And, um, and when I saw it, I was like, oh, no, that's photographic. And uh, so, yeah. So that this is I can see the potential for working digitally. So then and that was at Matt World. Then I was started working at um, at uh, Industrial Light and Magic, and a real b bonus there was John Knoll was working at Industrial Light and Magic, and his brother Tom Knoll. You'll see it if you go into Photoshop, and it says about Photoshop. Oh, no. Um, about Photoshop. Second name, Tom, Thomas Knoll. So, um, yeah, not scrolls. But anyway, the, the second name is, is Thomas Knoll. And so John Knoll was right there at ILM. So it was Photoshop 1, 1.1, 1 .1, something like that. So I was like, wow, yeah, this is a pretty cool program. Uh, I think we'll use it. And um, get that out of there. Um, <clears throat> so I was really fortunate to, to be on the, the beginning part of, of Photoshop because we could input like what we kind of brushes we wanted and it didn't have any layers. And I don't think layers came in until like Photoshop 3 or, or 4 or something like that. It had one alpha channel. And it was just really new. And like I said, that we were using for young Indiana Jones. Um, and our, our pictures, like when you're starting to work digitally, it's important how many pixels are in it. And television was only 720 by 586. And um, <clears throat> so we only had 720 pixels to work with. And I was painting a, boat, a, a picture of a boat for the young Indiana Jones. It was something that was, they were loading it. And it had a mast and some of the ropes. But those ropes were they're not even almost not even a pixel wide. So I was trying to get real fine lines with at 720 pixels across and just not that much to work with. This one here, yeah, it's 2020. Then it then pictures started getting to 2,000 pixels across, and then you got, you have some pixels to work with. <clears throat> and now um, most shows now are 4,000. It's 4K uh, pix pictures. And like you see on television, you'll see um, it's 4K TV. And oh my God, that, now the detail is starting to get right up there. Actually, some of the news, newscasters are starting to get nervous because it shows every blemish, <laughs> you know. And so then makeup starting to get real heavy. Um, and you'll see, yeah, there's a big difference between even just 2K television and 4K. So then it also up to the game for us map painters too because now we're working at 4,000 pixels and, and a lot of times we'll, I'll work twice up too like if the show is 2,000 two I'll just my painting will be 4k and then so I can get the detail and then when you shrink it down you know it'll still hold up and so now a, a picture will get to be 8,000 or 6,000 pixels across and but you know what? Uh, computers have caught up. You know they're they're keeping up, like because it's all about the speed too. When I had that little Mac two two Mac two CI or something, whatever, like you know the memory was 512k or something like that. You know, so hardly any memory, super slow. I mean, just to open a file, it's one megabyte. It's it was just took a long time. So the computers have kept up, and that's why while well, the movies are enabled to do this really special effects now and, and things look amazing. I think that that uh, Jurassic Park was probably one of the first ones that really showed like, wow, we can have CG characters that look pretty darn real. Um, that was pretty groundbreaking, that movie, because that's when I was at Industrial Light and Magic. Um, and because of the speed of the computers, the, and also the software got a lot better, and as far as like that's that's not really my thing because it that's character development and um, texture mapping and all that. But 
uh, you know, very impressive. That um, that's why the digital thing is is working very well for movies and television. Um, and amazing things are happening, as you can see in uh, in the movies today. Um, the one thing we want to try to stay away from is like the sort of the um, it's so sanitary, you know, like when when the digital when things were starting to get CG developed and, and computer generated, well, the computer's really good at patterns and, and doing things very precise and mathematical. <clears throat> and it just looks too sterile. It's, it's too, it's really, uh, you know, the, uh, it's just too hard-edged and, it, yeah, like plastic, too plasticky. Well, there's another use for matte painting. I'll get, sometimes I'll get a plate that they've already generated, they've rendered it and all the texture maps and everything are on it, but there's some really hard edges um, in some of the geometry and, and the buildings or just the look of it. It's too clean, it's just too clean. So um, uh, map painters are we're supposed to just grunge it up, you know, just grunge it up and, and we'll have a layer of dirt and I mean, even if you look in, in any environment, even if it's really nice and really nice area, Ojai, I mean, it, it's still going to have little dirt in the edges of the streets and it, just little nicks and things like that. So, uh, as a matte painter, we pay attention to that kind of little detail, and that's how, what makes the you know takes the edge off of all the CG, the the too clean of a look. Um, yeah, time periods, uh, a map painting can change locations too. Um, I was just driving yesterday and actually I saw a big, there was a big produ production, a big to-do with all these the, the trucks and the bringing in the lighting and they, they shoot something on location. Um, but you can use a map painter to, to create a location. They could shoot something in the studio and as a matter of fact, this one, this was shot with, I think you can see a little bit of green up in the upper edge. There was a big green screen behind there. So where the windows were, it was all green. So you can pull a mat, so you can, you know, whatever's green, we can put a, uh, a painting back there. Right. So it's called, you know, green screen, blue screen. Uh, you've probably seen that. Um, so, to save money, sometimes a studio will say, well, okay, that's a green screen kind of shot because we want to have like a really the, the devastated background in the back, you know, we're, we're going to replace the whole background anyway. So instead of setting up cameras and, and shooting something on location, which is pretty expensive, uh, they could shoot something in the studio, green screen, blue screen, and then replace it with a matte painting. They're called more, they're, it's getting more and more like you know, an environment paint, painter. We're environmental, environment artists. Not necessarily environmentalists, mm -hmm. but <laughs> environment artists. Well, so most of us are environmentalists too. Um, so um, the matte, matte painting is good for saving money. Uh, you know, they can shoot, they can do a shot a lot cheaper than setting up a big location shoot. Well, they might shoot something, they'll send out a still photographer, like if they wanted a certain look for the background, desert or a cityscape or something, we'll hire uh, just a still photographer and they'll, set, they'll, they'll shoot us reference pictures and we'll take those reference pictures and put them into the shot behind where the blue screen is or green screen. That happens a lot. Um, and like also, I, there was a movie about Christmas. Um, they shot it in Los Angeles, though, but they wanted it to look like New York. So then, they shot it in Los Angeles. Once again, I, I was on set and setting the the matte painting up in the, the the tape in front of the in front of the camera, and then where the tape was, then I painted the New York skyline, and um, so. There was like, then there's just maybe three or four key shots, they're, they're called uh, establishing shots, um, that say, oh, okay, they're in New York. But then the rest of them are like interiors or more close-ups on the, on the actors. And, you know, 
the movie goes on like that, but then there'll be an establishing shot, and those are the that's the juicy stuff for map painters um, when you when you do the painting for the establishing shot because you're responsible for really setting the whole tone and, and the location of the whole movie. So um, I think that was name was was all I want for Christmas. Um, <coughs> not sure if I have a picture. Well, okay, here's a here's one for the situation of peril. So um, this is so see this is what they shot. This is in a studio, and that that little cliff edge is not even that tall. Um, but they you know they have mats and everything if anybody just slips, but it's like four feet or five feet down. Um, so. Um, I say, yeah, but we want it to look like they could really uh, fall to their death. So, boom. So that's my job. I painted, I painted these um, rocks. Okay, now I keep saying that, that I painted these, but um, you know, I, I get you get rock reference, um, and it has to be photorealistic. Oh, also, there's a crop on this one, and then there's the color lookup. And then this is what, this, they just used that one little window uh, for, it was, it was for a TV show. Um, but uh, it has to be photorealistic, right? And so why, I'm going to use photos. And that's why, you know, Photoshop uh, is really perfect for that because I'll get good pictures of rocks and I'll, I'll look for, you know, down angles of cliff faces. And... Um, um, so, you know, I mean, I could paint that, but they only give you one week to do, you know, do the whole shot and everything too. So, um, so I, you know, I get good photo reference. Oh, the water that's in there, they've already shot that. Um, that was on a lake or something. So that gets added in because there's movement and there's some, um, you know, water. It, that's not a map painting. Uh, Anything that's like smoke and fire and things that are moving, that's, that's the visual effects. And so my matte painting, I give them a, a, an alpha channel or you know, like my matte painting can go over the top of the water plate. So they have a water plate that has the shimmer, then my matte painting goes in there, and then the, um, then the, the, the live action goes over the top here. This is, I actually painted all the rocks up like that, but then, see, I sort of match the um, the look. See, that's the right up in here is the, that's the look of, that they actually had that on set. So that was the look of their rock, and um, so I sort of you know I see I sort of match that. You you have to it has to match so because otherwise it's if it's the wrong color or the wrong texture, people are going to go no I don't I don't believe that. And actually, that's what I have to ask myself when I'm done with the painting. Is like, I buy that, or do I believe that? Yeah. And of course, it goes to the VFX supervisor too. Yes. So, are you mostly using? You mentioned you used the clone tool a lot, or like the clone stamp tool when you were first getting into Photoshop. What are some other of your favorite go-to Photoshop tools to do this mm -hmm. type of painting? Well, yeah, the cloning tool, especially for maybe where the, the live action meets up with where my painting is, is going, so that way the blend is really seamless. Uh, you know, I will use the clone tool, but maybe not necessarily the clone tool. I'll use a, you can use a selection. Mm -hmm. I'll use a selection and I'll just grab a piece out of the, uh, the principal photography and use that chunk and, and place it into my uh, painting and then I'll, I'll use the paintbrush, the paintbrush tool. Are you using like the patterns for paintbrush or are you using like actual color? Design? I'm using actual color, yeah, just um, cloning, like, because that's where, that's where actual painting comes in, to, to blend the f photography to make it look like it blends. Then I will use a, a, a paintbrush, either just a round brush, 
and I'll grab some of the colors from the, the, the live action. There's some, of course, Photoshop has all these custom brushes too. So they're good for textures. If I'm trying to, if I'm just painting some trees, like of course I'll still have a photographic tree, but if it's not a really nice shape or anything, I will use a clone tool to clone some of the, the leaves or something, but then I'll also use a, a paintbrush that has a texture to it um, to, to paint with, to just to, to do some blending. Now, you can get in trouble sometimes, and I have gotten in trouble with the director or the VFX supervisor. Said, well, that looks like a paintbrush. You know, that looks like a brush stroke there. And if that's when they start zooming in and they start, you know, really getting fussy, um, then they might, they'll, they'll say, yeah, that, I can see the brush stroke there. So you got to be a little bit careful depending on how much they're going to zoom in on it. Um, but other favorite things, like just be, being able to do good selections, I think, is an important part of um, Photoshop. You know, because you have to make good selections to kind of, you know, pull the live action away from your painting and um, just use it to, I use levels a lot, like, well, here, right here, this is the color lookup. And um, so the live action plates were shot this way. It's kind of neutral looking. But then there's a, there's a, um, a step that's called color grading. So the, 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 all the work is done, then they go through color grading, and the grader is responsible for just making the, the show one cohesive kind of look. That, like the color's not going to, like it's going to be really green or blue before the shot, and then it's like this is all neutral. So I had to work with, the, the, the final is going to be this kind of more blue uh, cyan kind of look. So I just, but I just keep that on a layer because <clears throat> When they shoot the plate, that's the plate, that has a certain uh, color to it and, and uh, now you ask in the beginning, it's like, okay, is that the, your color corrected plate? Because it's really important because I'm matching their live action. And they say, yeah, that, that's, that's the color corrected plate that's been scanned in, um, but we are going to um, put this, this final grade on there, so it's the color lookup. I keep that on a separate layer. Um, then also, I forgot. Uh, well, okay. This is for Lowe's. Um, and so matte paintings are used for, this was shot in LA, but they, they wanted to make it look like Christmas and, or you know, somewhere in the Midwest with a lot of snow, so the, all these yard areas were actually matted, some white mat that they put some cotton matting down and some sprinkling. So the, the set dressers, that's a whole other job that's very important. Uh, so they set dress this street this, and lights and everything. So there's a lot of money involved here, but of course they couldn't get to the roofs. So um, that's the plate that they shot. And um, so the, the matte painter's job here is to make this look better. Um, than I, so I, you couldn't see the shed, the, the uh, silhouette of the, I don't know if you can see that, the silhouette of the tree. So I've I lightened the sky. Then here comes the, um, the snow on the roofs. So see that, now that makes it more like, a, there's just been a, a recent snowstorm and uh, so all the roofs are, are uh, lightened, that have the snow on them. And this one, this one, see now this has, this did have a, a camera move in it. It was pushing in a little bit. So you'll see this roof in the front. I had to separate it out because when there's a camera move, then there, you get parallax. Um, and so th that front uh, roof was moving against you know the, the background uh, buildings. Sorry, we yeah. Have to leave, but thank you so no, much. I know. I was I was warned about that earlier them. that you had thank to leave you. early. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. it well, if you have so any much. questions, all right. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your time. Thank you.
1044? Wow, I talked more than I thought I was going to. But don't get me started. Yeah, that's the thing. When I start, I really get going about map painting and, and being a map painter. And um, I actually love telling my stories about when, when I started, when it was more of a physical thing. Because uh, the, the younger generation that's, that is just more, really only know about the digital part of, of map painting. They go, what, you worked on Dra Bram Stoker's Dracula and, um, and you know, the, the other Star Wars films. Um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, you just have to separate a few things out because there was a little bit of a camera move. There's some foreground trees over there that sort of slide against the roof. And then what else we got here? Yeah, now you have to be. You always have to be um, cognizant of. I don't know if you can see that little line, but that's the original frame. And a lot, a lot of times, the map painters are asked to paint over, over uh, scan. And I usually paint over scan like 10%. Because if there's any little camera jiggle or move, well, this one did have a move on it. Um, uh, then they have the compositor has something to work with and the map painter really has to, the, the map painter and compositor, is, that's a really tight uh, relationship there because if I don't, if it's jiggling around a little bit and you'll see like a little black line or there's nothing there then the compositor will say, hey Bill can you paint a little bit more on the outside. So I just have an, usually a 10% over scan on all my paintings. Um, <clears throat> and here this level, this layer is uh, you have to check your black levels. So, you know, with Photoshop, you can just you can crank up your levels, and um, and so you can really see. The, see, there, sometimes when you're painting, and I've scanned in some photographs of trees, but there'll be some real dark areas, and they they jump out. And so, and then I'll just I, that's when I use the paintbrush and, and lighten only, and I'll just grab one of the darker areas of the of the live action. And paint light and only it'll lighten up the uh, the dark spots perfectly to match the uh, light action. So and also it's always good to you know and for geometry for uh, architecture and everything. So it's good to know where the horizon line is. <clears throat> so I always do a grid and find out where the horizon line is. So I know what, usually there's a camera information. You you can ask for camera information when they shot the the original plate this plate. You know that had a, that had a certain camera height to it. If they're if they're paying attention, sometimes they don't. Like the, the a good production company to work with is they have got all the camera nodes. They know how to shoot. You know with the right lighting. Oh, I want to show you that. Um, because a lot of times this is for yeah. This was for um, the uh, uh, the TV show. Those motor with the motorcycles. Um, you know what is that show that you know? It's, and there, it's a bunch of motorcycle gangs. Um, anyway, I know what you're talking about. I just can't think of it. Yeah, but mine. The Mayans. Oh, nice. it's, just, it's a takeoff on Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. So this is for the Mayans. Mayans. MTW. You always have like a, a shop number and everything that you work with as well. But see, look, this is where they shot the, they, this was the plate. But look at that big bright light back there. Um, but they had to get that, you know, because then there was, they wanted lightning in the shot. Um, but it's supposed to be a nighttime shot. So, uh, so, and they want to replace the sky, so they know that light's going to be out of there. Um, but here's, okay, here's the cleanup. See, look, map painting also is good for, like, any trucks and, like, lighting equipment and everything is in the plate. Go, oh, yeah, they'll, we'll fix that in post. Uh, you know, it, it, it actually, uh, cinematographers are getting a little sloppier and sloppier, and they'll say, oh, we'll fix that in post. You know, you hear that a lot. <laughs> um, so that's what we do. We clean up, like we took out that truck and everything. Um, then here's, so yeah, then they want 
they wanted a really dramatic sky. And um, one, of the, if the, one of the comments was that if we want, excuse me, we wanted a religious sky. And I'm like, I'm not even sure what that means. <laughs> and it made me nervous. Uh, that was the, the, the director said, well, like a religious sky. Well, okay, then you have to be able to interpret sometimes what they're talking about. But this, you know, very, like, apocalyptic, I guess, might be another word. Um, and then, like I said, they wanted lighting, lightning. So I painted, this is without lightning, and then this is with lightning. So then with special effects, those are the people, here I'll show you, um, so this is, and this is one of the compositing. So this is working with a compositor, and see how it changes a little bit my painting. So you have to kind of know what they're doing to your painting. They're darkening the horizon and everything. But I'm giving them this, uh, this as my painting, and then the compositor, sort of as per, like sometimes the directors right over their shoulder, and they say, well, no, darken that the horizon a little more, and they can put a, a, a map there to darken the horizon. But in compositing, see, they're, they're adding these streaks of light because that's a moving element. The, the lightning comes out, and um, I mean, I guess I could paint a streak of lightning, but they said, no, we, we have some, well, as long as they use stock footage, and they'll, they'll overlay the stock footage onto, my, uh, onto the painting. So that's, that's one of the composites. They're at version, um, I can't remember, version 40 or something like that. Sometimes it gets really crazy. They, they'll, uh, they'll go up to, you know, I like to try to nail things within like three or four versions, but compositing can go on and on and get up to like 40 different. They, they do a composite every night. It usually they just run a render at night. Um, yeah, and then also this is like the, that, the, this is the crop. So it's good to, I put a mat on there because for me to evaluate the composition and everything, when I'm composing this, the clouds, like, you know, wow, this is really wide open, but no, that, that's the actual shot. And actually, um, I said, well, the, when they shot the plate, it went all the way down to there. I said, you know, because the sky is more the, the story point, can, you have to ask if you can tilt up the, uh, the shot because the director, you know, they've composed the shot in the camera. But we do have some freedom to say, okay, if I move this up, because I'm going to be painting the sky anyway. So they agreed, they said, yeah, we can, we'll, we'll bring the framing up that much so we can get more sky in there. Um, and then once again, see, checking black levels. Yeah, that one cloud, that one was getting a little bit dark, but it's still not, it's still within the, uh, the range of the, the black levels. Okay, so that's um, when you have to paint out, you know, a big light. And then also, it's like, well, we have to make it, you have to, okay, well, where's that big light coming from? Because there's these huge shadows from the live action. So I was trying to get a really bright spot on the horizon. And, I mean, there's only so much you can do. They're like, okay, yeah, it, well, it, they put a lot of rain and everything, and it's, a, it's fantastical anyway. It's these, it's these two gangs are like having this big battle. Um, so, yeah. So actually, when, when the lightning hits, then the, the lighting makes a little more sense for those long shadows and everything. Yeah, I should, I'm going to show one more thing. Open. Um, I guess I'll just show this really quickly. Um, so this was a completely um, generated uh, background and foreground. This is for um, Beauty and the Beast. And um, so it's, this is just completely made up. So uh, that's my the sort of the sky, that's the sky that I used. Then I put some distant mountains in there. Then I did the foreground. This was, the, I, they did have some models that they, they generated for me. That was my base. It's like, instead, so you get the perspective and everything is correct. But once again, the, the 
computer-generated models, and the render was very uh, too clean. It's too clean, so I had to break up a lot of the edges and put snow on the tops and everything. But it, it did start with a, a CG model. Oh yeah, and then I just had to make that a little bit bigger. And that's one thing where I take the selection of this area and then just take only that area and make that a little bit bigger. And then, yeah, some bases. Pretty sure I'm on that. I may have, those may have been real bases that, because they have, they have a little more of a, a not computer generated look. And then the foreground of the beast and, and the girl. Um, <laughs> How long did that take to do the um, Generally, yeah, map painting, they give you about, a, that one was a couple weeks. Uh -huh. Yeah, because there was some back and forth on that one. Because it, I was changing the, the scale of, the, of that, that mid-ground piece, mm -hmm. and then they wanted more haze in the back, so, you know, I would work for at least four, three or four days to block it all in, and then you might, because you don't want to show it too, too early either, because you can kibosh the uh, shot if they start, if you show it and it's in a sort of an ugly stage, and they're, then they're, uh oh, then they start focusing on, well, you didn't change that, you didn't, no, that still doesn't look quite right, although it's starting to really work, but they'll focus. So anyway, I'll show it at like probably four or five days in, mm -hmm. and then get some feedback. Goes a little bit back and forth, um, but um, yeah, generally it's a couple weeks, and in even a month. Sometimes if it's a really complicated painting, um, it can go for a month, which is interesting it, because when they say, "Oh, the, when it's digital, everything's going faster. We're going to go boom, boom, boom. You can work really quick." It's almost about the same as when we were just working on glass. Yes? Um, so you've shown us things from like a lot of different projects, right? And mm -hmm. so obviously there's more than one scene that uses CGI in like a lot of your projects like this one and mm -hmm. that you're showing us before. Mm -hmm. And so when you do work for shows like this, do you tend to stick to, like did you just do that scene or did you do more? Like when you have a job, is it like, here's this one scene or we want you to work on this movie where you're going to do like multiple scenes? Right, right. That's a great question. Um, because sometimes there's like two or three matte painters that are working on a show. So usually there's like a scene, like if you're, if you're working on, like I was doing, this is the, gar the garden scene. Um, then if there's any other shots that are with this view, then I'll do this, the matte painting. Yeah, like, or there, I did some of the castle scenes too, like looking up in the, you know, in the balconies and like, because they were computer generated and I was just mucking them, again, putting snow on all the top edges and everything. But at a certain view, they say, oh, Bill, Bill's handling when they're up on the, running around on the roofs and more of the rooftops. And so there, prob there could be two or three shots that are sort of in that same area. And then I'll handle all three of those. Um, and uh, yeah, that's how it goes. And then it's actually when we're doing the turnover meeting, that a lot of times this VFX supervisor is figuring out, okay, who's going to do what? And you start to assign, you know, the, the scenes because also like, like the Fast and Furious thing, I did all the, the, the wood scenes too, like when they're going through the forest and they're crashing through trees. Well, because there'll be certain scenes that, that all have three or four different shots. And so they'll assign that to, to me or to whoever's working on it. So yeah, that and that's where the, the good VFX supervisors they'll know how to you know assign and break down, you know breaking down the shots and to into the blocks that now they can get the project done. It's all about timing and and scheduling and everything. So um, yeah, because there's a cool one. Um, I worked on, yeah, this one. This was for um, uh, American Horror Stories. Mm -hmm. And it was their promo. Yeah, now this, not too much going on. This is the, um, uh, the graveyard scene. Pull that up a little bit. 
And so, as you can see, well, here's a blue screen ex example. So they're in, in, a, uh, in a big sound stage. And, it's uh, a little hard to see. Uh, and this was a pretty dark shot. Uh, so they had these zombies. They, they, did say, they set dressed it. They had some trees and grape and headstones. And they had th these girls, there were zombies making, you know, walking really weird. Um, like zombies do. And so they said, okay, um, but we want this to look, it, the, I think the whole thing was Dollhouse. One of the episodes is Dollhouse. And so, um, you know what, I might just go like this. Show you how it all. So that's that's the final, that's the final shot, and um, yeah, I'll show you the final, and then I'll show you how I broke it down. So the rooms that you see there, they actually were shot on the, in the in a sound stage. Um, it's interesting because these were just somewhat uh, the model shop made these. These are just little miniatures. Um, then these are full size because they, then these are actors, um, and so these were all sharp. And the vec effect supervisor was really sharp on this one because they had the right perspective. Even though this was down here, the camera, like all the perspective line, they did a really good job shooting the plates on this one. And then also the way the uh, miniatures were done, although you know so. In the miniatures, sometimes things are a little too thick, and so uh, Matt Kinder's job is just to kind of, I had to thin out some of the, um, the details on, on the miniature so it doesn't look like it's, it's you know, just, you're just look, shooting into a little dollhouse. Although I had some leeway because it was called, the, the, the show was Dollhouse. So that's what they, it was, a, they wanted this kind of dollhouse kind of look, but they wanted it to be kind of realistic too. There was a certain house that they went, it's I think in the Midwest somewhere, and they actually shot, there was a real house that they used. And so they wanted me to have the look of, of what they shot on location, also com combination with what they shot on, in the set. And they wanted it to look like a dollhouse, but and creepy, and it's like this weird, it was, a, it was an interesting one to try to figure out um, the, uh, there, that's better. Figure out, you know, the actual look of this that they wanted. That was the trick on this one. Um, so let me show you. So there's the house. So I just started to uh, develop the background, sky. Then, then I, this is this. Uh, there's some brush strokes for you, but that, that's what I'll do. Is cranning, it's called cranning it in. Uh, just to get the ground plane. I'm just sort of establishing a, a value there. And then, um, then, then I just start adding some trees and these are some photographic. Oh, this was, these trees were from when they shot on set at, uh, on location. I mean, at that, uh, that spooky house. And I said, well, we want more under lighting. So, that, so I added that. They, they shot something without light and then they, with light, so I added that. More trees that I found, more trees. Um, then, yeah, just building up the trees. There's a fog layer. It's really hard to see. But now, um, let me break the house down. And then I'm almost done. So then um, I just started building the port. Like, this wasn't part of the dollhouse when they shot on set in the stage. So I added that these two sides, then the roof, then these are the plates, this is the plate, that's a plate. Then, but the plate didn't, um, that's all they had, but I had to add these ceilings because the perspective wasn't quite right um, for, for the shot. So I added those, but that's, and that's usually, the clone tool and selecting colors from what they shot so it all matches. Um, they shot the attic, but then I put, yeah, that's another plate. 
once again, I just had to add, you know, the, the ceiling to that. And these are the miniature rooms. And they put a little zombie in there. That one, that was actually someone that's moving around, so that wasn't part of my map painting. So I have to deliver it like this, and then they add the zombie. But I, if they if they put something in there, like the compositors put something in there, I like to see what they've done so I can kind of do my compositing and and the lighting to match whatever they're putting in there, live action. And these are the floor edges. Then I put, yeah, you know, that broke up the front of it, railing, some bushes. Um, and then that roof edge, that roof edge went up too far and high, and so I brought that down. So there's the house. And there's just some four trees over here. So there was a lot of layers on this one. This one did go on for almost a month. Yeah, it was like two, three, three, three and a half weeks. Um, but uh, that was that was a really fun project. You know, I really like it. it what, once again, this was one of those juicy ones where it's establishing. It wasn't really seen as much, but I thought it was for prom promoting the the new American horror stories. Um, I saw it a few times, but. They, because when they do these campaigns, they have like many different things that they want to show. Like there was one with the boy just standing in the doorway, and, and the camera pulls back, and um, so, and that's another thing. As a map painter, you can't get too attached, or you know, well, you should be attached, you know, passionate about what you're doing, but you can't be too upset or you know hurt if it's not. A lot of times, your shot will get cut. You know, you, some painting that you worked on for a month, and it's like, oh, that's not in the cut. You know, the editing will have a way with it. The compositors will have a way with your paintings. They'll crank up your levels and do some things. Like I showed you, the, like that horizon got really dark. And, um, so you just, you know, you're doing your best job, and uh, you care about it, but then you have to let it go, too. You can't, and you have to, it's okay to let up the, VFX supervisor make changes and I have worked with some map painters like no that that's not right I'm not going to change that. I, that you know this of course you can make it you know I will say well uh, there'll be a, if there's a really strong reason for doing a certain thing in the shot like comp compositionally or, or with lighting or something I'll, I'll mention it you know but they have the final say. It's like you know, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you know, you're right, Billy. Yeah, we should that's we should leave that in there, or something like that." But some people get a little too uh, emotional and uh, throw things. I <laughs> think people throw their wake up tablet. <laughs> um, so uh, and well, speaking about painting on glass, there was Mark Sullivan. Um, we were painting a glass, and so he put it up in the, the parking lot. He shot at he shot it with a BB gun and stuff. It was, was kind of interesting. I don't know if he was. I don't think he was really mad at it, though. He just wanted to to break the you know to shoot it and broke the glass. <laughs> um, but let's see uh, improvements, cleanup, set, set extensions. Yeah, like. A map painting is used for, uh, you know, they can shoot something in, 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 on st a stage and then, but you can ex make it more grand, you know, ex set it, extend the set up, make it look like, wow, this is a big 100 foot roof kind of room, but it was only like eight feet, you know, but you extend it up. So, yeah, so any other questions? Yeah? Other questions? Okay. This uh, particular series that you were talking about, what uh, what uh, years? What years was it in? case we want to look it up and you Oh, this was recent. Um, this was American Horror Story. Is American Horror Stories? So it's when they redid like there was American Horror Story, um, and that's when there was like Hotel and Lady Gaga, and there was a whole series. So it's on HBO, and it was. It's more of a pretty recent series, probably just uh, six months ago, four months ago. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I think there's still. It's HBO, and 
As a matter of fact, I start seeing some advertisements for AHS. I think they even have some, maybe some new ones coming out. And the first one that you mentioned, Fail Safe, what year was that? Oh, yeah, by Dawn's Early Light. What was it called, by Dawn's Early Light? Yeah. It's like a Fail Safe movie. Yeah. Um, that was 88, 88. 1988. Um, so that, that was my very first one. So, uh, and it's with Powers Booth. And Rebecca De Mornay, very young Rebecca De Mornay, was in that. Powers of Booth and James Earl Jones, mm -hmm. the guy with the deep voice. He was the commander on the ground. Yeah, it was a good cast. It was a really good cast. Good, a good movie. Good solid movie. We did solid airplane work and bombs and uh, jets flying through fake clouds and everything. So I wasn't surprised that it won the award. It's just like, wow, first map painting. And it's like, <laughs> amazing. So thank you for your uh, attention. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I love it. It's like, what I like about map painting is, it, like you said, um, about it, there's always different projects, and it all, they all have different parameters and different VFX supervisors, and you know it's uh oh, that's uh, my photog that's my figure painting work, um, but it's always something it's always something different. Uh, oh, where it is? Yeah, there it goes. Star Wars. Let's start with back on. Um, so and it's nice uh, because. It just doesn't get boring. You know what, map painters have kind of a reputation too of like, like being a little bit renegade, because especially when it did Star Wars, the original Star Wars, my friend Mike McGrossy worked on it, and that's when they were actually on paint, on, on, on doing big paintings on glass, but there was a door to the map painting room, and they were, they'd close it and lock it, and then the, the effect supervisor, hey, what's going on? Is that painting gone? I was like, no, we're still working on it. And it's like, you you can't come in here. And um, so sometimes matte painters are like, they they think we're hard to work with or something. Yeah, but um, it's just sometimes we need to concentrate. To you can't be, they can't keep picking at it. And it's just like any artistic endeavor. I think you know, it's just like you need to let us do our thing. There's a germination period, you know, where you really, it's an ugly stage, you've got to get through it, and then, okay, now you can show it. But, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I like the whole, I like all my map painting buddies and everything, they, they're all pretty creative and um, pretty interesting. <laughs> so, all right, enjoy the rest yeah, of the show. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah.